Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Emma and I'm a peer advisor here at the American University Career Center. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about different kinds of interview questions and how to answer them. So let's get into it. Right. So yeah, like I mentioned, um, my name is Emma and I, sorry, it's taking a little bit to load, um, but the name of the event is Ace Your Interview, Types of Interview Questions and How to Answer Them. So just to go over what we're gonna be talking about today, I'm just gonna briefly run through who I am and also um, what the Career Center is and different career services that the Career Center offers. And then I will also um, get into types of interview questions and tips on how to answer them, specifically behavioral interview questions. So like I said, um, my name is Emma. Um, I'm a senior here at AU studying environmental studies with a minor in international studies. Um, my current TV obsession is Veep. Um, my current music obsession is Remy Wolf. Also, just to talk briefly about what I do as a peer advisor and also what the Career Center is. Um, our mission as peer advisors, there are five of us here in the Career Center, um, is to help undergraduate students with career development and the job and internship search. And we do this mainly through, through three different avenues. The first of which is classroom presentations. So you might have seen myself or one of the other PAs in your class um, presenting on career center services. We also have drop-in hours throughout the week um, where students can come in for 15 to 20 minute appointments to go over their cover letters or resumes or anything that, um, or any questions they might have about the job and internship search. Um, and like I mentioned, those are 15 to 20 minutes and they can happen um, in person or remotely. Um, we're up on the fifth floor of Butler Pavilion, which is a little confusing to get to, but the easiest way to do it is to take the elevator across from the campus bookstore up to the fifth floor and the Career Center will be there right when the doors open. Um, and like I mentioned, they can also access job in hours remotely um, and the Zoom link is on Handshake. Lastly, um, peer advisors also offer workshops for campus clubs and organizations. So if you're interested in having a peer advisor come and speak on anything we can cover in a job in hour, so how to include the club on your resume, cover letters, job and internship searching, we can um, come present to your club on that. Also, um, just to briefly run over some of the other online career center resources, um, you can access all of the ones that I'm about to talk about through Handshake. So the first is Big Interview, which I'll be talking about today, and I'll show you how to access. Um, the second is Alumni Fire, um, which is basically like LinkedIn, except just for AU. So you can access um, the profiles of other alumni who have graduated from AU, and it's a really great way to explore different career opportunities and also job opportunities that alumni might be posting. Going Global um, is a really useful resource, especially if you're going to study abroad, because you can look at different job postings in specific countries, as well as um, documents that go over what the workplace looks like in various countries as well. LinkedIn Learning um, is a resource that has a ton of uh, videos online that you can go through and look, and they range from um, salary negotiating to productivity in the workplace, and they're all taught by industry experts. So you can go through and look for a specific topic, or you can just search um, and browse through the options that are there. Um, lastly, there's also the ebook library, which are just online copies of all the books um, from the Career Center. So again, more generally, there are books on uh, resumes and cover letters and also specific towards certain industries such as finance or public health. So to get right into it, um, I'm going to quickly show you how to access Big Interview um, because I'm going to be talking about interview questions and Big Interview is an amazing way to practice your interview skills and the skills that I'm going to be talking about um, now to prepare for an interview. 
So, one second. Okay. I share my screen again. So once you're logged into Handshake, it should look something like this. And you're gonna see in the upper um, left-hand corner, there's the job uh, listings, and there's also other tabs you can go to. But right now we're gonna go to the right-hand side and click Career Center. And then you're going to hit Resources. And you'll see that big interview is the third one right here. Um, and you're gonna click on that. And this page is really helpful because it walks you through exactly how to register for a big interview. You have to create a separate account, but it walks you through um, the steps to do that and gives you the registration code. But I will show you what it looks like once you set up your account and you're all logged into big interview. So you'll see you just log in right here and then it will bring you right in. Um, so this is my account and you can see what it looks like. There's a My Dashboard tab, Learn, Practice, My Videos, Assignments. Um, so you can go to My Videos and if you record any videos of um, yourself practicing interview questions, you can go back here and watch them again um, and look for any things you can improve on or just generally how you're answering and formatting your answers. There's so again, there's also practice. So you can do practice interviews or the answer builder, which is really nice for the star interview method, which I'll be talking about in a few minutes. And you can also lastly go to learn. Um, and there's different um, topics that you can pick. So negotiating curriculum or interview playbooks. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of different videos um, that you can go in and watch those um, and learn the best skills and strategies for interviewing and negotiating. So I'm gonna hop back to the presentation. And this is again, just the, the slide I showed you um, of once you're logged into Big Interview, how you can access um, the, different, the different things you can do within Big Interview. Um, and like I mentioned, one of um, probably the most useful tool that you'll be able to use um, for the start interview method is Answer Builder, because you'll be able to build answers to a lot of behavioral questions that you might get asked during an interview. So let's jump right into it. So here are the different types of interview questions that you might get asked. So the first is credential verification questions. And these are any kind of questions that might just be clarifying from your resume or something that maybe you didn't include on your resume and they just wanna double check. So it could be something like, how long were you working at um, X company or at X job. Um, the next is experience verification questions. So these types of questions might include, what did you learn in that specific class or in that specific uh, workshop? What were your responsibilities in this position? Um, and the purpose of these questions is usually to subjectively evaluate the experiences you've had. So obviously you don't have room to include everything in a one page resume. So these might be questions just to get a better feel of what your past experiences are like and how they correlate to the job you're applying for. There's also opinion questions. Um, and these you might have heard as some of the most commonly asked interview questions because they can include what would you do in this situation or what is your greatest weakness? Um, and the purpose of these is to analyze how you would respond in certain scenarios. 
um, and also how you view yourself in your own work style. The next question that you might run into during an interview are behavioral questions. And this type of question can include questions such as, give me a specific, or can you give me a specific example of how you did that? And the purpose of these is to measure past behaviors as a potential predictor for future results. And I'm going to be talking more in detail about behavioral questions. Next are competency questions. Um, and these are more specifically related to career competencies, which I'll talk a little bit more about later as well. The next are brain teaser questions. Um, you, probably won't run into these as much, um, but these types of questions can include, um, how many ping pong balls could you fit into a Volkswagen? Um, and the purpose is to evaluate not your mental math skills, so don't worry. Um, but it's, also, it's mostly to um, evaluate your creative ability in, formula in formulating how you would respond to certain situations. So a really good method for answering these questions is to think out loud a little bit, because in a lot of cases, they're not looking for the specific right answer, but just more looking into how you're critically thinking about the problem that you were given. The next is case questions. And these would probably be questions that you would get further along in the interview process during a, a second or third interview when you're doing um, case studies or, um, maybe even potential work that's more related to what the job posting is about. Um, so these types of questions can include um, really market specific questions. Um, and the purpose is to evaluate, again, problem solving abilities um, and also how you work through potential case situations that you would get in the job. Um, and lastly, um, there are original thought questions. So for example, I know last semester when I was interviewing for a job, I got a question that was name five different ways you can use a stapler other than stapling things. Um, and that one really made me think a little bit. Um, and with those kinds of questions, it's okay to take your time and think it over. There is usually no right or wrong answer. Um, again, it's just testing your ability to think on your feet. So feel free to take your time and work through them. Um, and also to not put too much pressure on yourself because again, these are right or wrong questions. Um, they're more just evaluating how your thought process, um, how you work through um, problems. Sorry, it's being a little slow. Okay. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about behavioral questions um, because these questions prompt real life examples. And they're often questions um, that are really common in interviews and also get really stumped on. So like I mentioned, they prompt um, real life examples of things that you have experienced in the classroom or in the workplace. And they're fairly easy to recognize, which is a good thing. And they'll usually start with, tell me about a time when or what do you do when, have you ever, give me an example of, and describe A. Um, and the best way to work through one of these questions is to think of a good example um, to avoid rambling and also give a lot of details when you're explaining that example. And again, like I mentioned for the original thought questions, it's okay to take a little bit of time to think about how you wanna answer the question and what life example you want to provide when answering the question. So it's okay to tell an interviewer, that's a great question. I just need a minute to think of a good response. And that is completely fine to say. That if that leads to a better answer than just rambling, then it's totally worth taking those few seconds to yourself to think of a good answer. Speaking of which, it's very easy to say, oh, you just need a good example and you shouldn't ramble. But how do you actually do that? This method called the STAR method is a really good way to work through answering behavioral questions. And the STAR method breaks down the real life example that you would be giving into four different sections. The first would be the situation. 
The second would be task, third, action, and fourth, result. So what this might look like, and I can give an example um, for myself, is that um, let's say I get asked about a challenge that I've faced um, and how I overcame it. So for situation, I would set the scene a little bit. And let's say I was using an example from a business class that I was in. The situation would be that I was in this business class and you can give a little more detail about what you were learning in the business class and then say, and here was an assignment we were given. We were given our final project, which was to create a brand and marketing pitch for a new Ben and Jerry's flavor. That's the situation. And that's also the task. I jumped ahead of myself a little bit, but the task would be then the final project in of itself and the task of creating the Ben and Jerry's flavor. Next would be the action that you took. So um, the action that we would take in this case was creating the brand and marketing pitch. And let's say as an example, because the question is about a difficulty that you've had to overcome. Going back to the task, the difficulty in that task was that we had an unresponsive group member for a group project. And our task was trying to get them um, to be more responsive and more involved in the project. So in addition to creating the brand and marketing pitch in general, an action that we might have also taken was to reach out to that person and suggest meeting over Zoom to accommodate people's schedules and students who lived off campus in our group project. That would be an example of how we overcame the challenge of having an unresponsive group member. The result would be turning in the project and being successful in the class and getting a good grade on the project. Now, again, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to get a good grade on the project, but just that you the result was good in that that unresponsive group member was able to participate and actively contribute to the project. And then if it was a really great project and you wowed the audience um, of your classmates and you did really well, you can talk about that as well. Competency questions, um, they can look uh, they can look a few different ways, but an example would be, give me an example of how you learn new things. And the best way to prepare for competency questions is to look through um, the NACE competencies, which are career and self-development, communication, critical thinking, equity and inclusion, leadership, professionalism, teamwork, and technology. Um, so the best way to prepare for these kinds of questions before even heading into an interview is to look through these competencies and match them up with the job description. So if the job description is very technology heavy and you have to be very well versed in Excel, for example, then you can talk, then you can um, prepare to answer questions about that competency. Um, that, oh, I realize these are a little out of order, but um, I also just wanted to say um, that was it for the types of interview questions and how to answer them, um, because the competency questions and the behavioral questions are sometimes the most difficult questions. So I would recommend preparing for those ahead of time um, and having a few um, star uh, life examples laid out and also um, have run through a few of the NACE competencies and just have those in a document that you can look over um, and even have easily accessible if it's a virtual interview. Um, so that way, when you're on the spot trying to think of an answer, you'll have those in the back of your head ready to go um, and pull out and use to wow the interviewer. But that was it for types of interview questions and how to answer them. Thank you so much for listening. Um, you can follow us on Instagram if you'd like to stay up to date um, with the Career Center and also peer advisor events such as this one. Um, and our Instagram is at AUCCPAS. Also, um, this video is recorded and posted on YouTube, as well as all of the other peer advisor and career center presentations that you can find.
our YouTube is American University Career Center. Um, and those will always be available to you to go through and look at um, whenever you're needing some insight into a topic. Also, I just wanted to say good luck with your next interview. You've totally got this. Also, again, I just wanted to say thank you. And if you have any questions about anything I've talked about, um, you can send us an email at aupeeradvisors at gmail.com. Um, and we'll be able to get back to you regarding any questions you had about this presentation, um, or uh, if you want to practice mock interviewing or some more insight into how to prepare for an inter interview, feel free to come see a peer advisor during drop-in hours or make an appointment with your career advisor. Thank you so much.